Hello and welcome. Today we're going to have a feature bout. It's going to be the defined benefit plans versus the defined contribution plans, better known as the pensions versus the 401ks. Now we've talked about this in the past, but we're going to talk today specifically about which one's better. They're going to go toe to toe in the ring and Tony and I are going to judge which one is better. And then we're going to offer our listeners something special when it comes to these two. So which one is it? 401ks versus pensions. Let's get started. You are about to listen to an episode of Dolphin Financial Radio. Each week, co-hosts Dan and Tony will explore topics about finance and retirement. It's fun, informative, and most of all useful to those who are interested in retiring successfully. Now, let's begin the show. Hello and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio. It's me, Dan Wendell, owner of the Dolphin Financial Group and Tony Shore, my favorite co-host today. Tony, we're going to have the battle of the pension versus the 401ks. We've talked about this in the past. We've talked about lump sum versus pensions. We've talked about uh, how government workers are overpaid. That was an interesting one, and that was mainly because of the pensions. Um, you felt that they were overpaid. You think everyone's overpaid, though. Um, so before we get <laughs> into it, I want, I want you to put your money where your mouth is, Tony. Where are you putting your money? Which side of the ring are you going with? Which one is better for the average worker, a defined contribution or defined benefit, a pension or a 401K? Pension. Wow, with authority. Yeah, I've just I've always thought that uh, from what I know. Uh, but you know, again, you usually end up by the end of the show proving me wrong. So, <laughs> well, we'll, let me we'll get see. my. Uh, you're the financial expert here. I- I'm just along for kicks and giggles. Uh, in fact, speaking of giggles, uh, y- your intro, you said y- you didn't have a big enough pause, so it sounded like you said, "And my favorite co-host today." Yeah, well, I, it, <laughs> my favorite co-host, know, along with my this favorite morning, co-host this afternoon, today, today right, right. So I'm just, I'm not this, only this am I your hour. favorite co-host, just today, basically. This half hour, yeah. this half hour. Let's not get hasty. <laughs> not today. This half hour. You know, um, while we're talking about um, getting off topic, because it seems like that's what you want to do. You remember the the last show we did, which was um, we talked about selling may go away, and the full phrase was Saint. Ledger's Day. It went. I wasn't sure about the pronunciation of yeah. it. Well, I have some British friends, believe it or not, and they they did not correct me. They said that's how it's pronounced, St. Ledger's Day. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, one of them said someone snooty would say it's called Salinger's Day. And I said, what? And he's like, yeah, you know, St. Ledger's, some people might pronounce Salinger's, but not in regards to St. Ledger's Day, the horse race. So <laughs> I feel validated. I took a gamble there. It was risking alienating the British listeners. And we don't want to do that. <laughs> so you're going with pensions today. So let me get my notes out as to why 401ks are better. Because that I was going to go with you on that, but now that you said <laughs> yeah. you like pensions, yeah, now you're I'm gonna, going to now destroy you're pensions. you're going to take the other side, aren't you? <laughs> you're a contrarian. Yeah. You know, what's funny is what if, if you gave people a choice, what would they decide? We'll talk about that at the end because that's going to be the interesting part. But let's let's just start off. You know, they call it defined contribution versus defined benefit. Defined contribution is you you're basically defining how much you're going to contribute, which would be a 401k. You're going to contribute X percent of your percent of your salary. Defined benefit is here's exactly what we're going to give you. And that's the pension. We're going to give you X number of dollars when you retire if you do A, B, C, and D. So which one is better? And it really depends on who you ask. But let's talk about 401ks first. Um, let's talk about contributions. Because we're talking defined contribution, 401ks, you can you control how much you contribute. You can contribute nothing to a 401k if you want, right? Although the default now, the law, I think it was like four years ago, they changed the law to default you to actually contributing some of your salary. But it used to be in that first meeting, a new and higher, you have to determine what percent of your salary you want to put away. And this is the biggest decision when most people make when they start a job and they just don't realize it. And then the company may or may not match. And a lot of the companies do. So we call this the free money, right? 
That's why we like 401ks because they give you 100% return of your money because they match up to a certain percentage. But you control that up to the government limits. You can't put all your salary in a 401k because, because there's a limit as to how much you can put away. The government sets that. Whereas the pension, the employer funds the plan. They're the ones leading it, and they're the ones deciding how much goes in there. So you really hands off. So when it comes to which one's better there, I kind of like the 401k because you kind of are in more control. And you know me, Tony. I'm all about control. Yeah, but doesn't it end up costing you more? Because really it's it's mostly, I mean, besides the employer match, it's all your money. And the other way, the pension, is it really your money? Or is the company just saying, we're going to pay you this once you retire? Well, that's just it. Now, you do get the tax write-off on your money, the tax break, that year. So you defer your taxes on that income. So whatever you put into a 401k, you can say you don't pay taxes on until later. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. You don't get a you don't get a tax break on the pension income because it's not really yours. But let's be real, the the company is putting the pension money away. So you might say, well, that's free money too. It is. So there is that's that point. And you're right. You know, it's not your money coming out of your paycheck. Now they just pay you less. See, this is what we talked about with government employees. Are they overpaid? Yeah, they might be overpaid. You know, maybe they're getting. They're, but people, they complain about their salary being low, but they get this huge pension and they don't put toward it. So it's like, wait, there's, there's some value there. So you have to value that. You have to value that contribution from the employer. So I, I'm with you on that, but I just like to be in control. So Interesting. when it comes to, right. So when it comes to having control of your salary and how much gets put away, I like the 401k for that reason. Hmm. Now, talking about control. Let's talk about the controls of the actual investments. In a 401k, you have, quote, unquote, control over what you invest in in the 401k, right? Mm, you, kind of. <laughs> Depends on the company. Some companies give you a sheet and there's like four check boxes. That's or right. Or even maybe there's, ten, maybe there's 10 or 20. It doesn't matter. But you have to check, you know, do I want the TD Ameritrade account? Do I want the Prudential? Do I want the G50, the Gradient 50? You know, that type of thing. Right, but it's kind of like going to um, it's going to the restaurant. You go into a pizza restaurant, you can't order the lobster, right? Well, for most part, because it's not on the menu, right? So if you don't like that, go to a different restaurant. But that's the problem. You're right. You get this. You get this limited 401k options, and either you take it or you leave but it. You do have options. You do have options, so you do get to control. Whereas a pension, you don't know what they're doing. You don't have any control over it. They they send you that annual report if you if you're in a if you have a pension, it says, you know, what percentage of it's funded. If you have and, a magnifying you know, glass struggling. in about 100 hours. Right. Or if you're having trouble <laughs> sleeping, you want to read that. That's useful. It's better than uh, taking um, sleeping pills. Those annual reports, man. <laughs> Sometimes the, f the, the font is pretty small. The type is pretty small. And right. uh, usually it's pretty dry reading, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But which one do I like more? I like the 401k more here because they give you control. At least you have control over what you're investing in. Whereas a pension, you don't have any control. However, sometimes control is bad. You know, we talked about that on shows where it's it's the emotional decision making that knocks people down. Right. I it, mean, you know, I mean, control it, isn't necessarily good depending on who you're giving it to. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I control my own 401k, but I don't know anything <laughs> about money or stock. So how does that help? Right. Me? Right. It's true. It's true. So we could go either way with it. But in the long run, I'd say the pension takes the lead on that one because they are controlling it and they could be more diverse. Let's talk about that for a second. Like, you know, with the 401k, you're invested. That's where it's invested. If you move your money into the European developed section, you know, mutual fund that's listed there, your money's actually going in there. So it's not like, you know, it's not like you're not actually controlling it. You are. But a pension you know, if you look at what pensions invested in, they're more diverse. A lot of the pensions have a big portion, maybe like 20, 30% in alternative investments, which you just don't see in a 401k option. Yeah, you because they're looking for long-term growth. The company says we're going to be around 100 years. Right. So this is right. our and money. We want to, we want long-term growth. And so they are able to diversify. Yep. And allows for a smoother return, whereas the 401ks can be much more volatile, especially if you put 100% in small cap 
and the market corrects and then you're down 40%. You have no one to blame but yourself. Right. Whereas a pension fund isn't doing that. They, they're going to they're they're have a smoother, a higher return typically. Uh, Towers Watson is a big research company. They um, they looked at the performance of of defined benefit or pension plans versus four hundred one ks, and it turns out, and they just looked at the years ninety five to two thousand eleven, and they said the uh, the pensions outperformed by almost a percent, you know, point seven six percent, than the four hundred one ks, and so but when the markets really go up and rage, you know, have huge big years, the four hundred one ks do better because they're typically less diverse and they have that higher upside. Ah, I see. So, you know, but the pensions, you know, you know, their options. And in addition, while we're on the pension options, they typically have a lower cost. So if you look at the 401k options, it tells you what the returns were in the past year, five years, you know, hit lifetime. And they also show you the expense ratio, usually. And a lot of people, you know, they, what does that mean? That's how much it's costing you, the fees for that manager to run it. And what the pensions do is they have these huge, large amounts. They're able to negotiate better rates. They're able to get access to a lower cost options well, that the 401k can. Yeah, and you just mentioned something really important there, though. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to put 3% or 6% or 10% of my check into my 401k. That's going to be my retirement. They have no idea that there are fees, that they're right. actually they paying fees. Right. That it's not yep. all going into their account and compounding because fees are taken out. And I bet 60 to 90% of people don't realize they're paying fees in their 401k accounts. That's right. I didn't. They don't. My wife didn't. But the thing is, you don't have a choice, though. Right. I mean, you have a choice of the funds, but your company picks the fund manager, and then the fund, here's your basket of 10 options, and- what the fees are, you don't, you can't complain. Hey, well, these fees are too high. But I, I will say that the fees are, are compressing, meaning they're going down, and the pension funds are, and you can access a lot of the same thing pension funds can access. Sure. I think fees are going down generally across the board, but you're right. People don't realize that. Yeah. But, uh, but again, a pension takes your emotions out of it, and it's some fund manager somewhere. So, right. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, right. That's, a, that's a little advantage that goes to the pension right there. Right, I would give it that as well, uh, just because people are their wor own worst enemy. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we let our emotions get crazy. Here's another one, another uh, feature that I'm going to say leans to the 401k, and that's portability. So if you the uh, 401k, yeah. you if you leave a company, you can take your 401k and roll it into an IRA. Yeah, the whole thing. You can roll it into an IRA or another 401k at a different company. Right, that's right. And then, in fact, if you're working, you could a lot of companies allow you to roll your per, your portion of the investments, what you contributed, roll it out into your own IRA as well, even though you're working still. There's a vesting schedule, so you you got to know these things when you when you have a 401k. You know how many years do I have to be there before I get the company match? People just assume they get the company match because their statement shows my my 401k is a hundred thousand. You know. 60 of it might be your contributions and 40 of it might be the company's. But you don't get all of that if you leave after a year. You know, you have to look. So you're talking so about you're, the 401k now, the company match portion of what they put right. in. Uh, most companies, you have to be there a certain time before you can actually, that, that it's actually yours. Even though you see it, you see it on your statement. If I leave my, if I'm at my company uh, five years and the inv the vesting period is six, I only get what I put in. I don't get the match. That's right. I just helped someone with this. He had he sh he changed jobs. He he re quit and he started with a new company and he went to move his old four hundred one k. And he um this he, this was his second career move in a, in a short amount of time. He was there for two years and like ten months. We'll call it maybe even eleven months. That's how bad it was. And the vesting period was three years. Yeah. So he was short a month. Oh. So he was able to move 100% of what he contributed and 0% of what the employer contributed. Yeah, that, that's terrible. Uh, usually, right. I, most employers, at least the last couple I've worked for, it's three years. Right. So he was there, he, but he wasn't there for three years. So he just short of it. And they got not, and he, So what happens is he moved, he took his 401k, and his 401k statement said, like, say, 30000 He was only able to move, like, tw you know, 22 of it. So 8000 stayed. Yikes. Now, if he goes back 
he'll that'll be there for him, but he's not going back. No. So it's gone. It's gone. Um so but it's nice to have that portability when you do leave because the pension on the other hand, typically there's a larger vesting schedule. So you have to have a longer time frame there. And some, like say the military, you have to work for twenty years before they get the pension. If you if you leave before that you get nothing. So some companies it's five with right. the pension, some it's ten, some it's twenty. Right, and if you leave after five years and are entitled to that pension, you're going to get a small amount. It's not like you're going to get the full no, amount. No, you're yeah. going to get a small so, pension after only but five years. But you get years. something. Right, so you have to be aware of the vesting schedule. So I'm going to say that just portability-wise, 401k is better. But people don't realize that. They don't realize that there's a vesting schedule on this stuff. Yeah, because if you and, leave uh, a company, you're probably not getting the pension unless you've been there a long time. Right. I did have a, a client, um, she... She just approached me because she got called by a company. She's like, I had never heard of them company. They told me I had a pension at my old hospital, and they wanted to let me know my options, and I didn't even know I had it. I was like, really? Well, that's good. You know, so now we're analyzing it's that a option. Bonus. So, Right. So they're supposed to reach out and, t- and, and call you, you know, and let you know. Now, here's the last one I want to talk about. Then we'll get a little to which one's better. Then we'll, then we'll pick on you a little bit. So how about um, if the company goes bankrupt? Or your employer goes bankrupt. What right. happens to the four hundred one k? It's still there. You um, still get it, right? Right, right. Yeah. So you still have it. It's portable, right? So you you can walk even if your company fails. But if the company fails and you're getting a pension, a little different, a little bit of a difference. Yeah, here. I have clients that work for Pittsburgh Steel and some of the steel companies in Pennsylvania, and they had some hefty pensions. And when the companies went under, their pensions were at risk. So what happened is they went with the PBGC. Do you know what that stands for? PBGC. No. Peanut butter and something. Guacamole. Peanut butter, great chocolate. Ooh. Peanut butter, guacamole, right. and chocolate. Yes. Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. Oh. Yeah, so companies that have four um, pensions actually take a little bit uh, and they pay this this entity that is there in case they go bankrupt to pay the pensions of their employees. So it's like an insurance fund. So there is that. So the pension benefit guarantee corporation will pay out the pensions for P for companies that go bankrupt. So people say, well, if the company goes bankrupt, you're going to lose, you're going to lose your pension. I would not want a pension. No, it's not entirely true. There is a safety net there. Now it won't necessarily give you the full pension amount. Depends how, yeah. your pension is some of these really super you know ten thousand a month pensions you're not necessarily going to get all that so there's some limits but for most people for the average person it, it's it's okay yeah so i'm going to give the the bankruptcy thing to the 401k still because it is you know you have to worry about that you don't have to worry about the company going bankrupt so um Generally speaking, pensions are gone, right? For the most part, yeah, unless you're a government gone the way employee. Of the buffalo. Or as I like to say, Dan, you know, the pension has gone the way of the pension. That's right. Now, you said buffalo. I'm going to Mount Rushmore, as you yeah. know, this summer. Is it buffalo or bison? It's actually bison. What's the difference? There is no such, the, there is no, there are no buffalo technically in uh, North America. It's bison. We call them buffalo for some reason, but they're actually not. A buffalo, if you look it up, it's quite a different looking beast, uh, and it's from a different country. So, oh, no, nope, they're so actually the bison. My my daughter uh, is very into it. She did a 4-H project and won a purple ribbon at the state fair. For the biggest buffalo? No, for a, pro- a project on bison, talking <laughs> about bison. Well, I'm going to have to talk to her ahead of time, or at least have her talk She's to She's an expert so in that field, and we went to South Dakota to see them. So, yeah. No, no I'm, I'm, that's what I've got planned. Those are bison, so. not buffalo. Okay, so the buffalo are extinct. It's all with pensions almost. Um, right? Right, right? unless so you're why? a government worker. Yeah, and you know why? Companies don't want pensions. They simply don't want the long-term liability. It's a hassle. Right, well, it costs it really them is. more money. I mean, a, the bottom line is these big companies, come on, Dan. They are they gonna are they gonna choose hey pension which we pay, or four hundred one k where our employees have to pay into their own retirement account? We really we might do a match, uh, and you know if they do a match, uh, they can limit what it is. 
Uh, it's right, costing right. them what? It's probably costing them a tenth of what a pension would. I don't know. I, I, you're right. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah, obviously, for the company. Or else they wouldn't yep. do it. Yep. Right for the cheaper for for the company. Yep. And uh, right, that match. They don't have to do the match. They don't they choose to. It's I've like, worked right? for companies and, and, that have 401ks without matches, so they're they're out there. And if and a lot of them are like two or three percent. You can't retire on that. No. You know no. that's that's really not a lot. I mean, it's better than nothing. But you know, whereas a pension, it was hefty. It was hefty. And but the government still offer it, and that's because it's easier to manage and administer when you have a large pool of employees like that. Yeah. You know, whereas companies come and going, and then they. They're not as big, so you, it's, you know. So really, it's so they're going away for a couple of reasons, and the main reason is because it's cheaper for employees. You're right. If they were so, if pensions were cheaper, they we still have pensions. Yeah, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom well, line. And four hundred one k originally, you know, came about in the eighties as a tax shelter for the rich. Yep. You know, they had their pensions and they, tax they figured out a way. Money. Right, so and then all of a sudden the CPAs realize, oh, everyone can use this, and then the, and then then the rest is history. Um, you know, four hundred one ks are better for some types of people. I call them the roamers or the people that don't intend to stay in an employer for very long. Yeah, and nowadays that you know, happens more it. and more. Right, people, you know, thirty years at the same company, people don't. But nope. is it because they don't have pensions? Is that maybe it, or is it just you know people just don't have the attention span to stay with a company yeah well you i know? think i think it, or companies just don't last part of it long. might be attention span part of it is yeah we could get it that's a whole nother can of worms i uh the way i see it from what i see is in order to move up a lot of times in a lot of careers you have to move it's always been that way in radio uh, if you're a radio announcer and you want to move up or become a program director usually you have to go from if you want to increase a raise you have to go to a different station. It's crazy, but you do. If you want to be the morning show guy, you almost always have to go to another station to make more money and be a morning show guy. So a lot of people move as a career. It's part of moving up in your career. You have to move jobs to move up in your career. It's sad, but it's true. Do you see that, Dan? Yeah, well, that's just it. So the you know you might say the people are leaving because there's no career opportunities. Some might say just there's no loyalty anymore, but the employers right. are to blame, really. They're not offering the incentives and, and potentially. That's true. You know, yeah. And though you hear some people complain about the military saying, you know, I really don't want to stay here. I've been here for 12 years. I got eight more to get my pension. I, I'd rather do something else, but I'm kind of locked in. I want to get that pension. So is that the reason why you want an uh, employee to stay with you? Is it because you got them, you know, tethered to this pension? You know, so. Yeah. Are they going to be um, giving you their best? <laughs> those last right, eight years right <laughs> yeah, totally totally so i don't know um i will say this the uh the house of representatives passed a bill i think it's called the secure act s-e-c-u-r-e and um it's got to go through the senate now to be law but they added part of that bill it's all about retirement so we're going to be doing a whole show on it once it you know gets through the senate and the president signs it but Part of it has allowing um, 401k administrators and companies to add an annuity option to the retirement planning process. So as another option, in addition to, hey, let's get small cap European, you know, Asia, we're going to have an annuity option for guaranteed income. And the reason why employees don't offer that is because they're afraid these insurance companies who offer the annuities might go bankrupt and they don't want to get sued for it, Right. So the law is eliminating that liability so they can allow people. You know, isn't that crazy? You don't offer something for fear of litigation. Yeah. You know, don't offer that option. That's too bad So the, because I'd do that in a heartbeat. You know me. I'm a, I am ai like that guaranteed income. I like that. And, and I think you're an anomaly, though, Tony. Like, let's think this through. Listeners, imagine this. Imagine you're given the opportunity. And most of you have a 401k, right? Or 403b if you're a teacher. Now, teachers have both, which is great. That may be the, we'll get to that in a moment. But let's say you had a choice. You have your 401k and you're retiring and we'll call it $500,000. And you spent your, you saved your whole life. This is your nest egg. This is all you have, 500000 And uh, now you're going to retire and you're given the option. We're going to give you the guaranteed income for life. Um, let's say it's 
$80,000. I'm just throwing a number out there. We're going to give you $80,000 for the rest of your life, or we're going to give you the lump sum of $500,000. Which are you going to choose? What do you think most people say, Tony? Is it $80,000 a year? Yes. Well, that's that might be a little too much. Let's call it 45000 yeah. a year. Yeah. 45000 a year or 500000 Which do you want? I'd probably take the yearly because I know I'm going to have that guaranteed. I agree. And that probably would be the best thing for you. But most people will take the lump sum. Yeah, because they want to see all that money in their sum. bank account. And they think, it, it, they, it, again, they want the control. And you're always saying sometimes control is a good thing. Well, for you it is because you know what you're doing. Right. And if you're disciplined, uh, I happen to know myself, and if I had five hundred thousand dollars, I might, you know, the next day I'd probably have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of pizza and the other two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of new records and stereo equipment. Right. You'd own a record store. Yeah. I think you'd have zero, <laughs> and you'd own a record yeah, store. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that re- the net revenue on that is ten thousand a year, but you own yeah, the record store. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you'd be lucky to make that ten grand a year, honey. We we're moving in to what? Well, we have running water in the record store. We got. We, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll put a little kitchen table in the back. We'll get a microwave. Yep. You know, if you take that same proposal to a a pensioner, someone that has a pension or just about to get one, and then you said to them, "Hey." You're getting forty five thousand a year. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna stop that, but we're gonna give you five hundred thousand dollars today. Most people take it instantly without thinking. No. What's funny, Tony, is that the people that are on the pensions love them and they don't take the money. Ah. If you ask pensioners, but it's four hundred one k people would take the. <laughs> right. The people that have the lump sum as their primary. That's what they've had. They keep it and they don't want the pension. Yeah. The people that have the pension keep the pension. They don't want the lump sum. Mm. Interesting. It's so strange. You know, like if you say to people, hey, you know, you're, you're, you got your Social Security and you're short, you know, 10 grand a year, um, we're going to take your 401k and get that 10 grand a year. They don't like it. But if you said to them, we're just going to give you 10 grand a year, they love it because they just don't like giving up that control. Right. But once they give up that control and they get that guaranteed income, they love right. it. And, it's just a weird yeah. thing. And plus the thing about it is the guarantees on, on the annuities, uh, if, if they offered that option, are based on the claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. And like you say, oh, the companies might be worried about the liability if the insurance company goes bankrupt. But I know that you've uh, helped people with fixed index annuities from insurance companies that have been around over 100 years. I mean- the odds of uh, plus they have their own type of insurance on their annuities payout. So I don't understand where the, that's really probably not an issue if they get a decent annuity from a decent company. Right. Right. The, the, and you want to spread that out. You don't put all your eggs in one basket, but people have social security and they love it. They absolutely love social security. Yeah. People get and that. That's check. a guaranteed it's, annuity right there. Right. Yeah. It is from the government. And so, but what if they gave a lump sum option for, you know, oh. half the life? <laughs> You'd value? probably have people taking that all the time. Right. Yeah. Especially people that don't have a long lifespan. They might do that. You know, so people that don't have a long lifespan, the pension sounds stupid. But what if it's like a joint for you and your spouse? Then all of a sudden you got to start thinking. But yeah, it's such a strange anomaly. People absolutely love their pensions if they have it. People absolutely disdain pensions if they don't. Yeah. Weird. But if you you could recreate a pension and you'll love it and it makes your life so much easier. Stress levels go down. You have your and with it, we've th- we've talked about this. The studies show it. You know the scientific studies show that people with pensions are happier because they I know that they, check's going to be there every month. It makes life so yeah. much easier. It makes income planning and, and retirement planning sure, so much easier. If you've easier, got social security, uh, you know that amount's going to be there. You figure out what that amount's going to be. And then you take your lump sum 401k or uh, retirement savings and put it in a fixed index annuity, which ha- and then with an income writer with a guaranteed income, for for little to no fee, you know maybe maybe one percent on a fee, then you're done. Yeah, then you know, hey, I've my bills are for sure covered each month. I can live comfortably, right. and anything you have think- left over, you leave it in the market for growth, and you take out of that for and inflation protection. Right. Right. And that's it. That's so you do a combo. 
you, you have the income from the social security or a pension. If you don't have a pension, you create your own and then the rest you invest. And given the, given the choice, you don't have to take one or the other. You could do both. Yeah. But right now people don't have the choice. They either have the 401k or the pension. Some people do. Some people have both. So they'll have the pension and then they'll have their 403b mm-hmm. as a teacher, which is meant to augment it. And they're in the best spot. There, and you know what? We have a retirement crisis now. Do we have that 40, 50 years ago? No. When, pen, every, when most people had pensions? No, because everyone had their income guaranteed, and now they don't. And it's like, well, what's going on? What's the difference? So to wrap it up, Tony, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to say, I too like the pension over the 401k. Give, and, and, and that's really strange for me to say because given what I do for a living, I manage people's money. I get I charge a fee to tell people how to invest and and to help them invest their 401k. If everyone had a pension, uh I wouldn't have that You'd revenue. You'd probably I would, be I mean, out right? of a job, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like I well, feel that like alone, my job that alone is that alone shows how valuable the pen. That alone tips the scales toward the pension. Should put me out of business. Yeah. Just that that <laughs> <laughs> No, because that proves uh, that proves they're more valuable. Because with a pension, we don't need you. With 401ks, we got to have you. Right, yeah. right. That's yeah. it. I mean, and even you, though the people with pensions, mentality. though, still need you because they need to figure out how to make that lump. Some decision that they're going to – most pensions, uh, they get offered a buyout at some point. So. Right. But the people with the pensions, my job is a whole lot easier, so my fees are a whole lot lower. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? So it's just helpful. Yeah. And I think that's just the way it should be. And you're right. I, I would go with the pension over four hundred one k. And you and I are in agreement there. Wow. Even though, even though it's not happening, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I don't think we're going back to the no, pension no, no. Soon. Obviously, yeah. You can let's see you convince corporate America to spend more money. That's <laughs> it. But it, if you're listening and you say, "Hey, I wish I had a pension," you can create one. It's not rocket science. You can recreate yep. it. It's just you're going to have to look at your assets and do some math. You have to shop around. You have to figure this out. And you're going to do what the companies aren't doing for you anymore. The 401k is designed to be a self-serve. You're supposed to take control and do it your own way. And the company's just doing hands-off. So it's up to you. So you could do it. It's it, And you just got to – and that's what you need to do. You need to find someone that focuses on retirement planning, that can replicate these things, that can do that for you. If it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. And then that's – and and then you can retire successfully. And, and just like your grandparents did, relax – in retirement instead of always worrying about what the market volatility is. Right. Um, you still will because you're going to have to have some in the market, but it's not going to be as dramatic. Right. Well, hey, great show today. Uh, the pension won out, but there are advantages to 401ks, as you pointed out. Uh, now, Dan, before we go, let our listeners know how they can get a hold of you. You said you had something special for them. I know you usually have a special offer. Yeah, so if you want to get an idea of what a lump sum 401k would buy for a pension, you can do that, and I could show you that. It's very, it's it's not overly complex. There are some intricacies to it, but if you say, "Hey, listen, Dan, um, you know, I have my 401k. If I take a hundred thousand of it, what kind of pension can I get from that?" I could run those numbers for you. And give you that, and you can, and I can show you. Here's ten different companies that'll what they'll give you, and and I'll offer that to you, no charge, and there's no obligation either. You don't have to meet with me. You just email me, and or you could call me, and we'll get that data to you. It's more power to you to then decide what to do. The number to call is eight 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 five zero eight five nine three five, or just go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com and click on the contact button. You can see where my office is right off of US 19 in Clearwater, or you can just uh, connect me online that way, and we can do things over email. Again, the number, 888-508-5935. Tony, mark this day on your calendar. Well, you and I agreed, and I didn't pick on you. You were right. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Well, hey, that does it for today's episode of Dolphin Financial Radio with our host, Dan Wendell. The topics on this show are wide-ranging yet relevant to people approaching or living in retirement, like me. If there is a topic you want to hear on the show, head to dolphinfinancialgroup.com and contact Dan to request your topic or 
to share your opinion. Dan Mundo or Dolphin Financial Group are not affiliated or endorsed by Social Security or any government agency. Everything discussed on today's show was for informational purpose only. Since everyone's situation is different, some things may not apply to you. The materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources. We cannot be 100% certain that they are accurate. You should really talk to my dad or someone from Dolphin Financial Group before trying to implement these ideas or strategies.